Okay, let's continue where we left off. Okay. Let's see, I guess we're on to the next section. Mean value theorem. Let's see what we have to begin with. Okay. Yeah, okay, let's copy this. Um, I, you know, it's already quite late, uh, but I just wanted to upload a video just to keep the thing, the, the, the ball rolling. Um, let's just start off with this one here. Okay. Let's talk about this one here. So why do you need continuity applied to the mean value theorem? And let's open up the mean value theorem as well. Uh, where is it now? There it is, mean value theorem. Okay, so there's the mean value theorem. Now, why do you need continuity to apply to the mean value theorem? Construct a counter example. Let f be continuous. So what would happen if we delete this? Let f be continuous. So f is just over the closed interval and differentiable over the open interval. Um, then there exists a, at least one point such that the derivative is equal to fb minus fa over b minus a. Well, let's um, let's take a function. Let's try and keep it simple. Let's say fx. Uh, let's keep it very simple. Um, a equals zero. B equals one fx equals 1 if um, x is between a and b and 0 if x equals a or x equals b. So this is um, not uh, continuous because the limit as x tends to a, or let's say b, from the uh, left, f of x, that would equal 1. But that would not equal uh, f of b because f of b is f of 1, and uh, f of 1 is 0. Oh, maybe, mm, yeah, maybe I should just put in a 0 and 1 just. Okay. Um, so the limit as x tends to 1 of f of x would be 1, but that does not equal f of 1, which is 0. Okay. Now, they're supposed, they're supposed to exist a C such that uh, or maybe, oh, you know what? Maybe I don't want 0 minus 0. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just put that break at the end and have it as zero, uh, as one from the beginning. So the graph, if you want to picture it, it's kind of like this. So there's zero, 
there's one there's one and the graph goes across at one like that but then when it gets to one it jumps down to zero so they're supposed to exist to c such that f dash of c equals uh, f of b minus f of a over b minus a well f of one is zero and f of zero f of zero is one so that's minus one over one that's minus one but f dash of c uh, that has to equal one for all c between zero and one so everywhere here the slope is always zero So, yeah, this would be a counter example, um, and it arises because of the discontinuity at the end here. If it maintained its continuity at the end, then the formula here, um, that would be one minus one instead of zero minus one. So I think this is a reasonable example. And I think we'll just leave it there for today because I just wanted to make one video a short one.